Hello everyone. I want to go ahead and go over the concept of beveling. So the idea with beveling is when you select an edge loop, you end up uh, separating that edge loop into additional faces. Now, what do I mean by that? When I come up here to edit mesh and bevel and open up the dialog box, and I'm going to go ahead and click edit reset settings just to default everything. Uh, with default settings, I'm going to select this edge loop right here and just click apply. So notice how that single edge separated into a brand new set of faces. If I lower this value a little bit, you can kind of see what's happening. Essentially, it starts off as that single edge loop and slowly starts expanding uh, into a new set of faces. Now, if I come down to the very next uh, value. I can increase this and notice how it's introducing additional edge loops all the way around it. Now typically when you do this you're using a bevel to hold the shape of your geometry. Uh, if I hit 3 for instance, and I'm going to go ahead and just zero this out first, uh, when I hit 3 to subdivide my geometry Notice how this shape kind of collapses on itself. And if I take a look at the reference, it actually has a bit of a more pronounced edge around it. So to make that pronounced edge, I'm going to go ahead and use this bevel. I'm going to go ahead and come back over here and select the edge. Uh, whenever you're using a bevel, you typically want to use two segments. Two se segments just kind of creates the best amount of edge loops to hold its shape. Uh, I am going to go ahead and lower width a little bit. Width will be determined uh, kind of on your scene scale and how large you are modeling. Uh, but as you saw previously, if you don't get these values right, when you get this little pop-up to happen, you can change your values after the fact. So. When I am looking at this, I'm checking the reference and just trying to maintain how large that beveled edge happens. So I think I'll just increase that a tiny bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. If I move up a little higher on this model, uh, like this little ring for instance, if I take a look at the reference, notice how this ring is actually pretty round. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. However, on the fraction, I'm going to increase this value. So maybe something like that. I'm going to go ahead and check the side just to make sure it still looks good. And I'll even hit 3 to kind of take a look at uh, the shape. So notice how this shape is now very round, uh, matching very similarly to the reference. Uh, these two additional edges, uh, these should be pretty sharp, so this value should stay pretty small. So maybe something like that. I'll hit 3, just to kind of double check it. And I always try to rotate around the model to kind of look at it from all angles to make sure I didn't uh, miss an edge loop selected. And I'll even deselect it, turn off wireframe, and look at that. So moving on to a different kind of shape, if I come over here, and I'll start doing a similar thing. So you can select as many edge loops as you want at one time. So these little circular parts I'm going to select only because I know when I subdivide this, I want these edges to really maintain their shape. And I'll increase the value a little bit. I never want the bevel to be too tiny. I am trying to match uh, what that sort of edge would be like in real life. And I'll hit 3 to kind of double check it. Now I am noticing right here, it looks like I just have an issue with my uh, geometry. Um, just going to go ahead and fix that really quick with an append. There we are. OK, 
Okay, now since this is a cube, I want to try and maintain its cube shape. Uh, in order to do that, I need to select all of the edges along the cube. Now, since uh, these edges all kind of touch, I want to make sure I do all of these edges at the same time. So notice how sometimes I select only a handful of edges and I move through the model, and other times I'm trying to select uh, multiple edges at the same time intentionally. Since all of these actually meet up and touch, I want to make sure I select all of them. And I'll hit apply. And notice if I now hit three, how it's maintaining its cube shape. Now, if I control Z and go back to that, if I missed an edge, let's say I deselect this one and hit apply, uh, notice when I hit three, I now get this shape where everything is sharp except for this one corner. It's not holding its shape. And if I try to go back after the fact and try to select this edge and hit apply, uh, notice how I'm not getting the same topology. I'm starting to get some uh, triangles or sometimes end guns, depending on what you bevel. Now you could go back and kind of fix that topology, but it's always easier to just make sure you select every edge that's touching at the same time. All right, I'm just going to double check my model one more time just to make sure I grabbed everything. And the last part that seems to be collapsing on itself are these little edge loops right there. So I'll just run it, hit three one more time to kind of double check the model, and now everything looks good. Now moving on to another random piece, let's say this little bolt. On something like this, I want the front of this bolt to stay nice and round like this, but on the back piece, I actually want to maintain these faces uh, to give that look of a bolt. So to do that, I still want to select all of these cylindrical pieces like so. Now if I hit apply really quick, just kind of show what, what happens. Here I am getting this round shape, but I am not currently getting these defined edges uh, to tell that it's a bolt. So what I want to do is also grab all of these edges. And if I hit apply, maybe like point 0.3, notice how now I hit 3 to subdivide the geometry, uh, and it is giving me that shape I want, where this front is nice and round, and the back uh, has all the subdivided edges. And notice, since we have been using segment of two the entire time, this is giving me uh, proper four-sided quads along all of these corners. Go ahead and do one more piece. Uh, these round uh, objects are typically the quickest since you just have to kind of double click an edge loop and subdivide. Uh, don't forget to always take a look at your reference if you are going off of uh, a real source to make sure your model is maintaining its accuracy. And if I take a look at that, notice how it's really defining its shape. And I'll go ahead and do this piece right over here. It's sort of like the guard over this gear. And this is another instance where I want to try and select all the edges I can all at once. Now I'll select all of these three edge loops. 
or four edge loops should I say, since there's one interior one. Uh, grab all of these outer edges and hit apply. I'll hit three, just double check it. Notice how I actually missed an edge loop on both of these corners. So when I hit three, it's now rounding off or it should remain a square. So I'll just control Z that. Uh, just because it's quicker to then select these corner bits. Hit apply. And now when I hit three to subdivide it and rotate around it, notice how it's staying nice and sharp while also staying nice and round where I want it to be.